What's up, gang? Nick Howell, the Data Center Dude, back with another Google Cloud video right here on the NetApp YouTube channel. Thank you very much for joining us. Today, we've got some exciting news to share with you. If you've been following along with the videos all throughout 2020, as we highlighted the, the ways and features and all of the things that you can do in Google Cloud with NetApp's Cloud Volume service, boy, you're really going to enjoy this one because today we are unveiling in an alpha form our cross-region replication. Finally, yes, I know a lot of you have been asking and pleading and wanting this one. It is one of the most sought after feature requests that have gone on as we've been bringing all of these cloud products and services online across all of the major cloud providers. Cross-region replication is the one that trumps all. And I'm very excited to show it to you today. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump over to the computer. All right, guys, so here we are in the Google Cloud console. Our old friend, we're back in here. We've got some new volumes created. We're going to go and create a brand new volume that will be our destination target for our replication relationship that we're going to use, that we're going to sync a primary volume to as a secondary. So let's create this new volume. We'll give it a name. We'll include secondary or sec in the title there just to give it, you know, a naming convention of sorts. Uh, we're going to check the box that says that it's a secondary volume. And this is important to make sure that you not only get the performance from cloud volume service, but you can also tag it and mark it as a secondary volume. This allows it to be a, a destination for a replication relationship. All of the other stuff, the exact same as creating just any other volume. We put it in our existing VPC. We can configure custom ranges and export policies if we want to, but not necessary for a replication relationship. This is just creating another volume in CVS. And if you need to see how to do that in more detail, go back and check out some of the previous videos on cloud volume service. So let's head in now that we have the volume created, let's head over and uh, look at each of them. We've got a performance uh, volume and we've got a secondary volume here, but let's go over to volume replication and we're going to establish a replication relationship between those volumes. If you noticed, we had our primary volume in East four and due to the way that the regions pair, we created the other one in West two. So now we need to create the replication relationship between the source and destination of East four and West two and each of their corresponding volumes. Set a replication schedule. You can do hourly, weekly, daily, whatever you'd like to do. We're gonna choose daily and we're gonna create the relationship. So now what's gonna happen is we're gonna go through and we're gonna initialize this relationship, meaning that we're gonna do a full copy pull uh, from the primary volume over to the secondary volume. Uh, this is all going to happen across Google Cloud's backbone, so you get the most security possible, and it's not going to go out over the public internet in any way. Uh, you're gonna see it update from uninitialized and idle to a mirrored state and you'll see it to update that mirror only the changes on a daily basis or whatever you set that schedule to be when you're creating the initial relationship. Now we can see that it's idle and mirrored. It's ready to go. Any changes we make to the primary volume will also be affected with the secondary volume. Now let's take a look at what it would take to break that relationship if we wanted to do some other experimental things to this place, this volume, now that we have it in another place. We simply click on the ellips ellipsis menu, we put in a confirmation that's the name of the replication relationship, and it's going to go into a broken status. What that does is it now makes it read-write capable. Now you can use this as any other volume, uh, if we go over two volumes and take a look at that, we can see that we now have access to the volume, right? And because of that, it enables us to do things like dev test. Uh, we can do some patch testing, things like that on this secondary data set that is in another region away from our production and our primary. Uh, we can even mount this directly to a, an instance in Google Cloud that might be in that same region or because we can cross region mount, we can even mount it back to test workloads that are in other regions as well within that VPC. So now we see that it is in a broken state uh, if we want to resync this, now that we're done with our testing, everything's good to go, we want to reestablish and update the relationship. We do almost exactly what we did to break it. We go back in, we do a quick confirmation of the name of the replication relationship, and we confirm that. So what this is going to do is take that existing data set that's there uh, and look and compare the changes that it needs to make from the primary volume uh, and reestablish that sync, that one-to-one -one relationship. And it's going to reinstantiate the schedule of daily or whatever you set that to 
uh, to be able to reestablish that sync relationship between these two volumes in two different regions. So if we head back over to volumes, we can see that it's now retagged as a secondary storage type uh, for a, the destination volume. You can see you've got your primary right below that and that they are in sync with each other. So let's take a look at what it takes to delete a replication relationship. Uh, almost the exact same thing. But the thing to know is that you can't delete a relationship that is currently in sync. You have to break it first. So what we did just a minute ago by breaking it, we do that first. Once it's been updated and the mirror state is in broken, you can then delete the relationship. It's important to know that this does not, this does not delete the volume, the secondary volume. We're only deleting the sync schedule and relationship between the two volumes. After this, what it does is it turns the destination or target volume of the sync into just another primary volume of your data that is another copy of your data, just like you've broken it, but you've also just deleted the sort of auxiliary relationship that lives on top of it. So now you have a volume of the data in uh, East 4, your primary, and you now have a, another copy of volume in West 2. So there you have it guys, cross-region replication of your data volumes between two different regions. Let that sink in really quick as we went through this video. You can now synchronize data between two volumes in different regions over the Google Cloud backbone, giving you the most security you could possibly get inside of Google Cloud. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. There are a lot more here on the NetApp YouTube channel. Just search for Google Cloud in the little search bar right there. Make sure you subscribe to the channel here as well by clicking that big red button and uh, set your notifications to all so you get notified anytime we put up brand new videos. We've got a lot more coming for you. We've got insight coming right around the corner. So stay tuned and we'll see you guys next time.